The Division 2 is set to go live in just two days, and this new chapter in the Division franchise's history has brought a new set of challenges and complexities to new and veteran players alike. To help agents ready themselves for the upcoming release, I have again teamed up with the Division Academy and the Division Elites to bring you part three of this series of tutorials into theory crafting for the Division 2. This is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer and the hype is steadily building agents as we ready ourselves for the release of the Division 2. But before I begin, I would like to thank my partners, Sean from the Division Academy and Sean from the Division Elites, links to their social platforms in the video description below, as without their guidance, resources, and knowledge of the game, I would not have been able to craft these tutorials. This is the third of four scheduled tutorials into the Division 2, and I am excited to be concentrating today's episode onto the available weaponry that agents will have access to in-game. So, if everybody is ready, let's dive into the weaponry, weapon archetypes, and general background concerning the weapons in the Division 2. There are seven weapon archetypes now available, up from six in the original Division game with the addition of the rifle category. But for the purposes of our tutorial, let's begin with the ever popular assault rifle category. Assault rifle characteristics include 30 round base starting magazines, moderate recoil patterns dependent on weapon RPM, average reload times, average base damage, and full auto fire only. For the Division 2, we can confirm 10 different assault rifles with one more seen in trailers but not yet seen in the beta. Going down the list in alphabetical order, we see the Remington ACR, three variants of the Kalashnikov AKM, Steya AUG A3, Tavor CTAR 21, three variants of the FN FAL FAMAS, two variants of the Heckler and Koch G36, two variants of the Colt M4, two variants of the FN Mark 16, also known as the SCAR L, and two variants of the Patriot Ordnance Factory P416. Variations of these assault rifles are nothing more than cosmetic changes in the design of the weapon and feature no enhancements amongst them. According to normalized testing in the beta, the weapons stacked up like this in the area of damage per round with the highest being the AKM to the lowest, the CTAR 21. Rate of fire from highest, the CTAR-21, to the lowest, the AKM. And normalized DPS from highest, the FAMAS, to the lowest, the Steya AUG A3. The only weapon missing from the base damage and normalized DPS charts is the ACR but I would expect it to fall into these rankings somewhere around the Mark 16. Earlier, I mentioned that there was another assault rifle that was seen in trailers, but was not seen in the beta, with that weapon being the FN F2000. In real life, the F2000 fires at 850 RPM, features a bullpup configuration, meaning that the action and magazine are behind the trigger group, and a forward ejection system that allows for fully ambidextrous operation without modifications. My overall thoughts concerning the assault rifle category is that there are many decent options in this weapon archetype. All the assault rifles featured recoil patterns that were easy enough to control, reload times that rival that of the submachine guns, and damage models that made them competitive but not overpowering. Submachine guns have always been a popular choice in the Division series, with base characteristics that include 25 to 53 round base starting magazines, laser beam recoil patterns, better than average reload times, base damage numbers that rival many of the assault rifles, and full auto fire only. For the Division 2, agents will have 10 different submachine guns to choose from, and going down the list, we see two variants of the SMG Steya AUG A3, two variants of the Sosimi Type 821, two variants of the Intratech Tech 9, known as the SMG 9 in-game, 
two variants of the Thompson SMG, two variants of the Heckler & Koch MP5, the Heckler & Koch MP7, SIG MPX, FN P90, two variants of the Kalishnikov Bison PP19, and two variants of the Chris Vector. According to the normalized testing and the beta, the SMGs can be arranged into this chart for damage per round, with the highest being the T821, to the lowest, the MP7. Rate of fire from highest easily being the Vector, down to the slowest, the T821. And normalized DPS from the highest, the Vector, down to the lowest, the Thompson. Overall impressions of the SMGs are all entirely positive. Fast reload times, extremely easy handling characteristics, decent base starting magazine sizes, and many different models to choose from make equipping an SMG an easy choice to make. What makes this weapon archetype so interesting to me is the extreme variations across these offerings in not only base damage, but rate of fire and magazine capacity as well. Really the only negative to equipping an SMG is the damage to distance drop off, as these weapons really are meant to be used from 15 meters inwards. On a side note, the only SMG missing from the rankings is the P90, but with a base starting magazine of 50 rounds and a rate of fire of 900 rounds per minute, the P90 will more than hold its own, not only in the area of DPS, but sustained damage as well. Staying with the full auto weaponry, let's next cover the light machine guns, and I've got to admit, I have always been a huge fan of these weapons. Even in the original game, when they were clearly not the best weapons in the game, I still equipped them, and tackled in-game content, and even PvP with my trusty LMGs. Light machine gun characteristics include 45 to 100 round base starting magazines, heavy first shot recoil patterns, below average reload times, above average base damage numbers, and accuracy that tightens the longer you hold down the trigger. So pop firing an LMG to keep it on target is actually counterintuitive. For the Division 2, agents will have six different LMGs to choose from, including the M60, three different variants of the Kalishnikov RPK-74, the FN M249 Bravo, Heckler & Koch MG5. Enfield L86 LSW and FN Mark 46. According to the normalized testing in the beta, the LMGs can be arranged in order of damage per round, from the highest being the M60, down to the lowest, the MG5. Rate of fire, which is clearly the MG5 being the highest, down to the lowest, the M60. and normalize DPS from highest, the M60, down to lowest, being the RPK-74. My overall impressions of the light machine gun category is that they seem to be finally getting some much needed love and attention. Equipping an LMG, even in PvP, is now something that agents should consider as they feature the ability to deliver punishing amounts of sustained damage downrange. This sustained damage ability, also known as damage per minute, is something that agents should consider when it comes to equipping an LMG. If you do choose to equip an LMG, remember to keep your trigger fingers pinned wide open and use the tightening accuracy characteristics, large ammo counts, and above average damage per round figures to your advantage. New to the Division 2 is the rifle category of weaponry, and these are weapons that are similar in size to assault rifles, but that is where the similarities begin and end. The rifle archetype characteristics include widely varied base ammo counts ranging from 5 up to 30, heavy recoil patterns with pronounced muzzle rise, reload times on par with assault rifles and even rivaling that of some SMGs, high base damage per round, and almost exclusively semi-auto fire mode only. 
Like the assault rifle and SMG categories, the rifles will feature 10 different models including the Winchester 1886 lever action rifle, the ACR, two variants of the Springfield Armory M1A, the LAR-15, the LVOAC, three variants of the FN Mark 17, also known as the SCAR-H, two variants of the SIG-716, the Desert Tech Microdynamic Rifle, also known as the MDR in-game, two variants of the Heckler & Koch USC-45 ACP, and the only burst fire weapon in this category, the M16A2. Looking over the results for normalized testing in the beta, and we can place the rifles in order of damage per round, from the highest being the Mark 17 to the lowest, the M16A2. Rate of fire with the ACR coming out on top of a tightly packed group, on down to the slowest being the 1886. And finally, the normalized DPS, from highest, the Mark 17, down to the lowest, the M16A2. Impressions of the rifle category are mostly favorable, as this new weapon archetype, if used properly, is extremely strong. Max RPMs have been adjusted on all rifle models through the various betas, so we will need to see what version lands on agents this coming Tuesday. However, with the high base damage and moderate weapon handling characteristics featured across the rifle category, this selection of weapons should be considered by all agents looking to excel at medium range conflict. Shotguns have returned from the original division game and feature the following handling characteristics. Base ammo counts ranging from 2 to 20, moderate recoil patterns, above average reload times, high base damage figures, and almost exclusively semi-auto fire with the exception of one weapon in this category. Agents will have a selection of six different models to choose from in this weapon archetype including the MPS AA-12 full auto shotgun known as the ACS-12 in game, double barrel shotgun, two variants of the Remington M870 pump action shotgun, three variants of the Saiga 12 gauge, two variants of the Franke Spaz-12, and three variants of the Benelli M4 Super 90. Normalized testing for the beta broke down like this, with the leader and damage per round being the double barrel, down to the least damage per round, the ACS-12. Rate of fire is easily won by the ACS-12, on down to the slowest, the SPAS-12. And now for the normalized DPS figures, with the highest DPS being the double barrel, down to the lowest, the ACS-12. Notice that there was not enough data to place the SPAS-12 into the rankings charts, but with a fire rate very similar to the Remington 870, it should fall in somewhere in that range of damage per round and DPS. Of all the weapon archetypes, it was good to see the shotguns as a whole get some much needed love and actually become competitive in PvP once again. Back in the original game, I know there was ultra-specialized Cassidy Lone Star builds and players running everywhere in the DZ with a showstopper AA-12 on their backs, but as a whole, the other shotguns were less than impressive and most players simply avoided them or immediately broke them down for mats the second they received them in their inventories. My impressions of the shotgun category as a whole were positive overall, as they do display the high base damage and two-shot killing potential that a shotgun should be in close. Recoil was manageable, and as long as you could keep your target within the targeting circle and weren't too far away from it to suffer the severe damage to distance drop-off, a shotgun was a solid choice for when you needed to be in close and personal with your enemy. Marksman rifles are back for the Division 2 and agents of the original Division game should be very familiar with this weapon archetype. MMR characteristics include base starting magazines ranging from 5 to 10 rounds, extremely heavy recoil patterns, 
below average reload times, high base damage per round across the board, and mostly semi-fire auto mode only. There are six different Marksman Rifle models to choose from in the Division 2, and all but one of these have returned from the original first game, starting off with three variants of the Mosin Nagant M44. The Desert Tech Covert SRS, two variants of the Remington M700, the DSR Precision SR1, and two variants of the Dragunov SVD. Reviewing over the results for normalized testing in the beta and we can place the marksman rifles in order of damage per round, with the highest being the M44 down to the lowest, the SVD. Rate of fire with the SVD easily taking top honors, down to the slowest RPM being the M700. And finally, the normalized DPS figures with the SVD crushing the other weapons in this category due to its superior fire rate, down to the lowest DPS, the Covert SRS. Impressions of the Marksman Rifle category are all over the place, as this weapon archetype, above all others, is really difficult to place. Besides the SVD, the other bolt-action rifles hit hard, especially the M44, but with the forced ADS mode on high magnification scopes, titanic recoil, and reticles that seem to take a bit too long to zero out makes these weapons high risk, high reward. The SVD is an entirely different animal, as the high vertical recoil makes it difficult to keep on target and landing quick follow-up shots, but that is the whole concept for a low damage, high fire rate weapon to keep landing follow-up shots. If an agent has competent aim and can land headshots, the 100% headshot damage multiplier applied to marksman rifles will yield huge damage numbers. And we have finally arrived at our last weapon archetype, the sidearms. And as a whole, this was a largely forgotten category of weaponry in the original Division game. Early on in my testing of the Division 2, I quickly noticed that sidearms were now a relevant choice in weaponry, and in certain specialty builds, can even be used in place of a primary weapon. The sidearm category of weapons typically displayed the following characteristics. Base starting magazines ranging from 2 to 20 rounds. Light to moderate recoil patterns. The fastest reload times in the game average to below average damage numbers per round, and fire types varying between semi and burst fire modes. To be clear, there are three types of weaponry present in the sidearm category, with those being pistols, revolvers, and a double barrel shotgun. Agents will have the option to equip one of 11 sidearms, including two variants of the Smith & Wesson PF-45, three variants of the IMI Desert Eagle 50 Cal Action Express, two variants of the Colt M1911, the Beretta M9, two variants of the Beretta PX4 Storm, the FN X45, two variants of the Beretta 93R, also known as Rafica, the Smith & Wesson 586 Magnum, the Smith & Wesson 686 Magnum, three variants of the Chiapa Rhino, known as the Disseros in game, and the iconic double barrel sawed off shotgun. Normalized testing results from the beta yield the following results. In the area of damage per round, the M19 is the winner, with the 93R being the weakest. Rate of fire with the highest being the 93R, down to the slowest, the D50. and in the area of DPS from the highest, the 93R, down to the weakest, the X45. For the purposes of testing, the D50 and double barrel shotgun were not able to be accurately tested, but expect both of these weapons to be at the tops of the charts for damage per round. Overall impressions of the sidearm category is that they are strong. Not as strong as full auto weapons, but more than capable of handling their own in PvP. I consistently equipped an M9 in combo with my PvP shield build and was more than able to down agents in short order. 
In certain instances and in combo with the exact right gear pieces, you can wield the sidearm as your primary and deliver punishing amounts of damage on target in very short order. Limitations for this class of weapon is always going to come down to range to target, and there is some muzzle rise when firing as fast as the weapon will allow. I know this is a ton of information concerning weaponry, but for the viewer that wants to refer back to specific sections of this weaponry guide, I will include timestamps in the video description so you can jump back to specific sections to watch again. And in case you are new to my content and didn't know, I produce and upload weapon reviews for every weapon in the division. And I have covered most of these weapons in my previous division weapon review guides. If you are looking for more weapon background, testing results, and general overall impressions of these weapons, I will include a link to my entire division weapon review playlist in the video description. And for the hardcore division agent, these really are required viewing. I would again like to thank my partners, Sean from the Division Academy and Sean from the Division Elites for their contributions and guidance during this collaborative effort. And I would like to direct you to their various social media platform links, including Twitter and Facebook in the video description below. If you want some more Lieutenant Buzz Lightbear and my Division 2 content in your lives, make sure to pound that sub button and don't forget to save and configure to receive all notifications from my YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter and look for me over on Twitch with weekly Division streams. Until my next Division 2 video, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbear saying peace out. Thank you.